All right, so Full Circle Magazine is a uh, electronic magazine that's published essentially every month. Uh, it was started by a guy named Ronnie Tucker, and it was the first issue, Zero, was in April of 2007. He's been ba basically publishing every month up until currently. The current issue just came out recently, issue 77 in September of 2013. The original idea of the magazine was that it was about Ubuntu. And it evolved a little bit to be about Ubuntu and its derivatives. There was a big question for a while whether they wanted to expand into other distributions and so on. But it has um, been pretty contiguous over time. Um, obviously, it was uh, 704 was the version of Ubuntu back when they first came out. So there's some differences, <laughs> uh, you know, from what the articles talked about then. The uh, magazine itself uh, is available online. It's free download. Uh, it's a PDF. It's also available in EPUB editions and um, certain other things. The magazine every month has a regular set of features. They, of course, have changed over time. It used to, you know, have... Well, it still has some of these um, gaming sections, a section on Ubuntu women, a section on where people can show off what they've done with their desktop and so on. But the big thing that they have added has been some how-to series. The how-to series focus on some piece of software. And the series go on for as long as whoever is writing it is willing to keep going. Some of them have gone for a long time. An important thing to note is that a lot of those pieces of software that they're doing how-to articles on are cross-platform. So they can run on Windows and Macintoshes as well. So the how-to articles work for a lot of people. Now, this may not be terribly important to a lot of you who already know how to use those pieces of software that you do. For example, the, the series on Inkscape would probably be pretty useless to Brian. But to somebody else, maybe not so much. Um, a big thing is that if you know people that you are trying to convince to uh, try Linux or to try, you know, free and open source software is that you can have them do it on Windows and they can learn to use this software, which once they're used to it, certainly makes it a whole more, lot more comfortable for them to move over to Linux. So that's a pretty big deal, I think. Um, I will tell you that in Slug this year, uh, we are going to try to go through uh, some of the tutorials. Problem is, we're going to start with LibreOffice. And there's so much stuff on LibreOffice in its series that we don't have enough meetings this year <laughs> to cover them. Unless we do you know, multiple um, lessons in each meeting. But we're going to try it and see how we do. Um, in my own club at the park where I live, uh, we meet every week. So we plan on going through that whole series. And uh, I think it will be quite interesting for a lot of people that know that office software can do much more than they know how to do. And some of those people don't even know how to use it to write a letter. So we'll go through and teach them that. And by the way, although it is a historically been a Windows club, because everybody uses Windows, uh, I think I have five people in the park now converted to using Linux. So, you know, once they give it a shot, they mostly decide this is where I want to be. It runs better. 
I don't have to worry about so many things, and etc. Well, you know that story. We don't have to go through that. Okay. This is just a collection of links that are useful. Uh, with all those issues, um, there are lots of back issues, and if you want to download them yourself, you can. You can also read these things online. They also started somewhere along the line doing podcasts. And the podcasts, um, to be honest, I don't like podcasts. Uh, I want a visual, and that's they're just sound. And I have not been impressed with the sound quality of the podcast, so I have not listened one through just to see what they really cover. You know, it, it seems that they probably talk about the things in magazines, and they probably, you know, have multiple people talking about stuff, so they probably go beyond what's in the magazine, but I just don't know. So one of the things with these series is that they started putting out um, special issues that were collections of the series. So you didn't have to go look at, uh, you know, 15 different uh, issues to go through 15 articles of the series. So they have issue on Inkscape, that's a special issue IS01 through 02. LibreOffice is, you know, you can see what they are. For, so there's one for LibreOffice, there's a rather long one for Python, uh, one for Scribus, one about setting up an Ubuntu server, another special issue on Becoming a part of Ubuntu development, you know, how you set up and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, one about Ubuntu Unity, although it's evolved somewhat since the session was written, it still has a lot of valid stuff in it. And then there's one on virtualization. And they do both, they, they go through uh, VirtualBox, they go through using uh, Zen and Proxmox. Um, I can't tell you how detailed they are because uh, uh, I just went through them this afternoon and looked to see what they covered, and that's about all the time I had. One thing to point out, though, is that the special issues don't mean that they're done writing articles on a subject. So, for example, if you're interested in that very long Python series, it's still going on. And... Uh, you know, there are new articles on it that are not in the special issues. I wanted to do a, a little sidebar at the end. I wouldn't be here now, but I'm going to get out of the presentation mode here. Um, there is a, another whole series of things about GIMP. And there's a guy in Germany that has put together 193 videos on using GIMP. He is still doing them. Um, new one just came out not very long ago. Uh, these videos are typically 10 to 15 minutes. They go through one to, I don't know, five different things that you can do with GIMP. They are very clear. They're well done. Um, and where there is material for the exercises, you can download it in a zip file uh, so that you have both the video and the material for the lesson. The very first lesson, video number one, taught you how to do five semi-advanced things in GIMP to co make corrections to a photo. It was very impressive and easy to follow, easy to do. So, good stuff. So, let's see if I get out of here. Okay, so this is the website uh, that I was talking about. This is his uh, uh, wiki. And it has a bunch of links on it that are useful. The main website here, they have forums. They have a, a Google Plus account that you can, you know, go 
use and join and watch and follow. They've got a Facebook thing. Who cares? Twitter. Who cares? Uh, this is where you can go and um, read the issues online. You don't have to download them. You can just watch them in your browser. Um, they have an IRC channel. Do not know how active it is. And then here is the, you know, to talk to the webmaster for um, the uh, website and you know, talk to them about things like this is not terribly important. Uh, this is the main website and as you can see Full Circle Magazine number 77 has arrived. I um, don't know if there's a date on here. Um, but you can also go look for back issues and go through all of this stuff. There's also a you know, download back issues thing that goes there. Uh, this is for the watching online and this is for their podcasts. So all that stuff is there and available. Here's a collection of the magazines and they started off being in a vertical orientation and on legal sized paper. It always pissed me off because I'd go to print it and it would drop this lot of stuff off the page. Uh, but they changed that to a, uh, a widescreen format and one that is made to fit on 8.5 by 11. So it works. Anyway, if you go look at an issue, in fact, let's go down here. Here's the current issue. And... I hate using these short, you know, these narrow screens for projectors because normally I make this, you know, full size. Um, but if we, yeah. So I make it so, you know, one page fits on the screen and page down does a nice clean job. But if you look here, you know, they've gone on with uh, some of the series. And I think there's, Python is still going in here. Uh, Blender, Inkscape, uh, I thought I saw, a, oh there it is right up here. So part 47 of programming in Python and I will go back over here and documents This is a document I was making some notes on what's in here and using some of the notes to you know, organize the talk tonight. So if you look, the set of subjects progresses and uses useful examples for most of these series. So for example, the LibreOffice series we're going to go through and do all this stuff when we, you know, have the course at, uh, at my club. The Python series has a lot of stuff, but here I, there are more articles, but because a lot of them are in multiple parts, um, you know, it didn't take as much to do it. But you go you see that it goes through using several different designers for GUIs um, and some different things for generating code and uh, goes in gets into doing uh, XML and SQL databases and you know all kinds of stuff in there there's the set on Scribus you can see they get into quite a bit of stuff there but I think that series got dropped before he got, he got far enough to really be great. So you get, get the idea that it's uh, you know, a pretty good series of stuff. So are there any questions? Dennis. Actually, I'm very glad you gave the presentation because it reminds me of that resource for my students that are just coming in. Minutes. 
Ah, okay. I think it's really nice to be able to show them. There's magazines like this, like Work to Use and such. Uh, I think it puts a more professional face on what it's a lot of. True. Do they have um, editors for all this? Does somebody just say, hey, I'll write this? I'm presuming. They, they have a. They have a style guide for writers and how they should, you know, put their stuff together. Um, the guy that started it uh, is the editor of the magazine. Uh, I'm not going to say he doesn't have any help. Uh, if you look at the masthead of, uh, you know, one of the, uh, uh, if you look at the masthead for one of the magazines, he talks about the other people that, you know, contribute to it. And so there is accreditation there. Oh, by the way, this is all published under Creative Commons. And they use Scribus, LibreOffice, and I forgot something else. Yes, those, those I, and GIMP. They use those to put the magazine together. Do they have peer review for models to look at content as well, or is it mostly up to the founder? I can't answer that. I have I started to read the style guide once, got called away, and never got back to it. So I don't know what the process is. I do know that you have to submit an article. It has to be approved. They have, somebody is, you know, judging if you follow the style guide and that sort of thing. So there is some kind of review, but how much it is and whether there are peers involved, I can't answer. Okay, well, that's still a start, which is good. Not that, you know, the nice thing about the internet is everybody can you know, post something, including their top dog, and goldfish. <laughs> um, but the, uh, especially the technical information, um, and things have changed, it's nice to have the vetting process, like maybe that, or even, you know, for, for many of us, I mean, how many of us have gone through countless pages after page after page? It's absolutely ridiculous for what we're trying to work on. Right. Um, so, cool. It's not this subject, but remember I gave that uh, talk on subsurface here. And I have not been contributing to it. Um, I looked a little bit more into the code, and as I was starting to do that, the people on the mailing list got really active with this new version they're trying to put together. And pardon me for saying so, but I think they need some help. Because these guys are trying to put together something that used to be in GTK. They're trying to move it to QT. There, it always was straight C, because Linus liked C. Uh, but to go to QT, they needed to incorporate C++. Uh, their make files are a mess. Uh, they're trying to cover you know, multi-platform because subsurface is available for Windows and Mac as well. And not only available for, but to be compiled on. And so that cross-platform stuff is just going nuts. And I got to tell you, watching the mail lists and the numbers of things and patches that are going across and people saying it should be this way and others saying it should be this way, um, I'm going to be amazed when it finally works for everybody. Um, I don't doubt that it will, because there's some pretty smart people out there. Um, you know, Linus is definitely involved in it. You see his name on quite a few of those posts. And of course, we all know that, you know, he does have his opinions. <laughs> Well, he isn't. For, he doesn't program for the kernel anymore, but he does look at code for the kernel, and he still exercises his uh, <clears throat> God-given rights. And uh, but this is 
more a hobby for him. No. He is a scuba diver. So he's interested in having subsurface do the job that he wants done. Just like back in the 80s, when I started scuba diving and there wasn't any software out there that did what I needed, I wrote my own. And that's how Linus got started on it in 2010. Anyway, side subject, the relationship that I was bringing up is that this is a collaborative effort by a lot of people and volunteers writing articles, and that's a much easier job than collaborating on a worldwide software project that's making all of these conversions. And you, you get something done and then it breaks and breaks in a different environment or a different way. And my God, it's amazing any of that stuff ever gets done. Um, so I'm pretty impressed when it does. Anyway, any other questions? That's what I had to say. So if anybody wants the uh, Full Circle Magazine stuff, come see me. There is something else called Full Circle Magazine. So uh, it, the easiest thing is to put in Full Circle Magazine, one word, dot org, and it will go right to it. But there is some commercial venture that apparently uses that term. <laughs>